Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I want to share with you some interviews that I took when I was at the Microfield Day out here in Ventura County this last December 2022. Ventura County holds a Microfield Day monthly, and this one was particularly neat because we were able to host it outside of an Airbnb, which gave us access to bathrooms, which is always a plus when you're working in the field. Um, that all said, I have to thank uh, W6KME because he organizes each and every one of these, finds a location to do it, goes through the whole rigmarole just so we can go out and operate some equipment out in the field. Uh, with that, oh, almost forgot, don't forget, if you like my video, subscribe down below, and hey, any questions or comments, make them in the comments down below of this video. With that, let's get over there to that Airbnb and see what everybody's up to. raising a flag but he isn't he is raising an antenna and this is the guy that puts together all of these micro field days so I just came over to personally annoy you a little bit and ask you uh, what you plan on running today and uh, what uh, what what your goals are I have to start by saying it's nice to be annoyed by a professional <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, well, I'm running an ICOM IC718, which is a terrific portable radio. It's very lightweight, but fully featured. It's a great home radio, too. Um, I'll, swing, I'll swing down there. It is way down yep. there. This uh, is a G5 RV, which is my favorite portable antenna. And I'm going to back up, try not to kill myself. Uh, honey, if you see this video and I die... Tell the kids I love them. Okay, let's see here. Oh my goodness gracious. That is really something. So that mast, uh, what, what exactly is that mast? It is a 30 foot extendable flagpole. Okay. It's really lightweight. It is nowhere near strong enough to hold a flag up in high winds. But I run this antenna in 35 mile an hour winds and it didn't blink an eye. So I, I have to ask, uh, did you buy that from, uh, what is it, uh, Flagpole USA or whatever online? Or? No, I bought this from Bulldog Liquidators. It was $12. Really? Yeah. Very cool. All right. And, uh, it is, it's held up more the way you would hold up the mast on a boat. I use jam cleats. So one person can put up three guy lines in, oh, maybe 30 seconds to a minute between attaching wow. and leveling. Good deal. Um, yeah, I did notice that, and those uh, those come in very handy. You're absolutely yes. right. And so that halyard to the top to haul the antenna up, more boaty stuff. Right on. And 
that's it. I'm going to go tie off the ends of the dipole now. And... All right. Well, let me, uh, let me okay. before you go, let me ask if there's anything else you'd like to share before uh, we take the camera on to somebody else. This is micro field day. We do 11 of these every year, every month with June, which of course should be pretty busy field day wise for everybody already. And it's not only a place to come try out your equipment and see if you can do it portably, you don't need mobile gear. It's a good time to find out that your regular home station isn't that hard to set up in the field. Well, there you go. And uh, Plus, if people you, want you more info, you get to hang out with hands. There you go. If people want more information on that, who should they contact? They should contact Keith at whiskey6kilomikeecho.org. All right. We'll do an overlay of that email address. And Excellent. thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, no worries. All right. Well, hello. And tell uh, me about what we're doing here. So here I'm running FT8 off of my uh, Chromebook connected to a Raspberry Pi wirelessly and then off my Yaesu FT891 with an MFJ tuner. And in the back I have my custom built power supply running off of solar. And then I've got it going on 20 meters connected up to a buddy pole dipole set up here. All right. Now you're awfully low on this dipole. Yes. Any, uh, uh, and you're, you're over here on 20 meters. Um, let me know how you do with that distance-wise. You probably will get decent local traffic, yeah. but you may have a little bit of problem with distance. Yeah, when I've done it before in, in other microfield days, I've actually gotten country, you know, state, uh, countrywide and into okay. yeah, South America and stuff in the past. Sure. So, uh, it ideally should be higher, but... Yeah, for what I got right now, for portable ops, it's, you know, work in progress. The only <laughs> bad antenna is the one that isn't in the air. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So you, you run any way you can. Well, all right. Thank yeah. you very much. Oh, Anything else you'd like to add? No, just having, having a good time. We'll have, looking to see everyone else's uh, setups. Well, that's what I'm walking around trying to do. We'll see how that goes. Excellent. Anyway, thank you so much. All right, welcome. And, and we'll looks like I should actually have uh, Virginia here. So Very cool. Have to get across the country. So. All right. Good deal, Perfect. buddy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So, what are you out here doing? Uh, okay. I'm setting up a uh, QRP kind of antenna for uh, 40 meter and down. Uh, I don't know. I'll see. But uh, 40 meter, 20 meter, yep. 30 meter. Okay. Yep. And uh, uh, up. I see, right? Frequency wise. Right? Well, all depends. If frequency is higher, yeah. you know, so yes. Yeah. yeah, I guess it would be up. Yeah. And uh, so I got the uh, 705 that the uh, icon. Oh, all right. And, all right. Uh, How do you like this radio? So far, so good. I like it very much for all the mobile traveling that we, that we do. Right, and, right. Uh, I only got a maximum 10 watt. I'm trying to use an external battery right now so that. Uh, after 10 watt, but right, right. For digital, it's perfect. Okay. You do not need a lot of oh, power. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can work this uh, low power from my car antenna and then get all the way across the uh, United States, uh, even South America. Wow, and Japan, okay. All right. antenna. Very Today, cool. Today, I'm trying to use a much better antenna. Yeah, I got a better. shot of it earlier. Uh, it's around the corner there yep. uh, with that. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Hitch mount that yep. you have on it, which is which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's a uh, flagpole that uh, uh, so aluminum, aluminum um, uh, mass five sections, uh, six sections actually, six sections of uh, five feet each. So 20, 30 feet, a little bit at the bottom. Uh, hi, Frank is here. So uh, so I just wanted to uh, put up something like uh, support it higher. Right. Uh, normally I would throw in a tree and uh, make a, you know, a V, but today I can make a sloper out of it and uh, uh, it should be better than normal. I would right, say, yeah. right. Try to see how far I can go. Well, yeah. and that's always the game. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, thank you for sharing some right. time with thank us. You, thank all right, you. all right, man. We'll talk yeah, to you yeah. soon. Yeah. Well, all right. Can you tell me what you're doing out here today? Right now, just doing proof of concept that I can get out here and uh, set up quickly get operating quickly and be able to put it away quickly in case of emergency. Right on. It's good. Usually I have set up for UHF, VHF, but this is HF for today. I'm uh, having a very bad antenna. I have a, my all band antenna just sitting there. I'm going to move over here to get a shot of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, 
Look, you know as well as I do, Zach, the only bad antenna is the one that isn't up in the exactly. air. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And especially when you're running emergency communications, nothing's going to be perfect. Run with what you got. Exactly. And that's what we're trying to prove uh, today, uh, that we can do it. All right. And to do it at as quick as possible, set up as quick as possible, in as small a footprint as possible. Exactly. Because we don't know where we're going to be. Exactly. And it works. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right. I need to interject here that this is just a quick glance at KJ6TTN setup. Uh, he comes loaded for bear, doesn't he? Uh, you're here at Microfield Day. Why? Well, uh, I had put some design into some equipment uh, for communications and this was uh, the first time opportunity that I was able to bring it out and uh, piece everything together, have it all working at, at the same time and see what worked or didn't work because uh, theory is great but sometimes uh, when you go to put it in motion it, it, uh, things don't add up so that's, uh, that's, my, uh, that's what I'm trying to, that's my goals for today. All right, and have you discovered anything monumental or are things kind of going the way you want them to? Uh, a lot of it's going the way I had expected. Uh, there are some cable lengths. You realize when you when you deploy that uh, a piece of equipment needs to be a little farther or uh, you know, in a, not where you had anticipated it being. And uh, trying to do the math on your voltage and your amperage and making sure the cable lengths, because anyone can add 100 feet of cable, it sounds great, but uh, you know, could burn things up. So, Trying to make sure all of that is appropriate, so when we do, when we're asked to respond to um, a call out, that we're not, uh, we don't show up to a, a place and, and become a hazard. We're, we're there to help. All right. Well, good, good. So you're getting lots of good information, and that's great. And uh, are you going to be running mostly VHF UHF today? Today is only VHF UHF. I've got a um, two meter, seventy centimeter, and one point two five meter. So uh, I'll be running two twenty, four forty. Okay, yeah, 1.25. So uh, the only other question I have, were uh, you planning on doing any uh, packet tests or anything like that, or is this going to be phone only? So the uh, the equipment I brought today does do packet. Uh, I can uh, pack it into uh, the EOC uh, where I'm at. I have not done it from this location, so it would be interesting seeing the programming for that and seeing if I'm set up for that. Yeah. And then uh, additionally, I do have windling capability, so I'll be trying that today as well. Oh, fantastic. Just so you know, uh, all of uh, the uh, county EOCs all operate on the same frequencies. Okay. All you need to know is they're uh, tactical, and you should have no problem with that. Fantastic. All right. Yeah, that'll help. All right. Good deal. Well, thank you for sharing some time with me. I really appreciate it. Looking forward to a good time. All right. So why are you guys here today? We're on 40 meters testing out this radio. It's a Kenwood TS50. And I've had it for quite a long time. Jason thinks he would like to have it. Ah. So he's getting me on HF for the first time. Whoa, all right. Great news. All right, well, thank you very much. We've got our 40 meter dipole strung up over there. Well, there it is. Yep. Oh, very cool. And of course, uh, center weight, you're using very light. Uh, Coax there, hopefully, right? Yeah, we hope. Yeah. We're using a uh, uh, short power power supply here, not on battery today. All right. Anything else you'd like to share? We're connected. I hear, I hear, uh, I hear contacts out there. I think all you got to do is throw a call sign out there. You might just talk to somebody. We got radio contacts on here with uh, this net that we're about ready to check into. Fantastic. All right, guys. Well, thank you. All right, so you're out here at uh, the Microfield Day, and what are you what are you running? ICOM 705. Oh, very, ooh, very nice, very nice. And uh, let's see, you're running uh, what? Uh, uh, you're running CW. You're running uh, digital. Not, right now, I'm doing Vara. I okay. Just, I just connected to Rob Hansen's Vara FM. 
Very good. And send him a message, and I'm going to now try to do HF and see if I can hit my, my newly installed Vara HF at home. And home is Ventura, right? Camarillo. Camarillo. Okay. Yeah, on the other side of the dirt, so we'll see what that well, works. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, I will tell you that uh, based on propagation, it's hard to say what you can talk to. Right. I do a lot of Vara HF, and realistically, I shoot to go distance. Right. Right. I don't know how you're doing the Camarillo. We'll find out. We'll I'm find out, a, right? Vertical onto a wire, so. Oh boy! All right. So, that's, that's so yeah, now now you not only that, but you killed all your yep. uh, NDIS. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm using a it's a, a chameleon. It's part of the M Pass 2.0 um, antenna set. Uh, I got a buddy that owns the the, the entire thing, yeah, and yeah. just yeah, okay, there you go, and he loves it. He loves it's it. It's fast and set up. I've got yep. a, I've got a connector on one of my pockets on my pickup truck. Oh, there you um, go. I can I can screw right out of there and just sit in the truck and do and do POTA. Well, fantastic. Really easy, so, all right. Works out well, well, thanks for sharing. You're very welcome. And we'll see you out there on the air. Oh boy. All right. Take care. Hi. So, tell me what you're out here doing today. Oh, a little micro field day and just threw some gear in the car and said let's set up so all I right. use the 57D. Right on. Um, and hopefully going to trace some uh, soda, people on the peaks. And then we set up a 133-foot MPEG long wire, okay. um, which is a little droopy right now. Um, we might have to stretch it out because it doesn't like 10 meters. Right on, right and, on. And uh, just hitting the analyzer on it right now and see what we can do. Okay, all right. And you, sir, what have you been out here doing? I'm here helping Ron make sure he gets on the air. And, there you go. And the analyzer's happy. And, and everybody's happy, right? <laughs> yeah, the uh, the long wires can be challenging sometimes, you know, especially with uh, uh, with the ballon matching and the rest of the stuff. So yeah. it can be difficult. And I don't have a tuner. Oh, well. This end fed half wave, so. So we're gonna try it without a tuner. We hope. What is uh, rule one? Always have a tuner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with an in-fed half wave, I usually don't. I think part of my problem is it's the wire's not straight. It's, it's too possible. Much of a droop. Yeah, or you could be and picking up reflection off the pool. There's all sorts of things. You yeah. may be too low to the ground. You know. It's up there pretty good. Well, yeah, channel, that's off. Did you try yeah. twenty? I'm sorry. Did you try twenty? Yeah, I'm just getting there right now. All right, well, I wish you luck in getting this all set up, and good luck to both of you in making some cues. And uh, get that taken care of, gentlemen. <laughs> all right, so hey, you know, all I'm going to ask really is, why are you here? Why are we here today? Uh, we are here because, um, well, it's field, Michael Field Day. It's a good, uh, good time to come out and see what everybody else has got going on, what they're, what they're working on. Uh, we've got a wind link set up that we're, we've been working on at the house. We've been having difficulties, so we brought it out here to try it out in the field. If we have some, if we need some help, we've got plenty of resource, resources to help us with it. All right, well, good deal. And uh, at the end of the day, what's your goal? To make sure it's running properly. Make sure everything's working. And is this a setup you also have at home? It is, do you share a go kit and a home station in the same equipment? It is all the same equipment. Yes. Okay. All right. Real good. And uh, let's see, what else would I like to ask you? But right now at home, you? we're checking in a different way through Windlink. We're checking in through the... Through Via Telnet? Telnet. Yeah. Through Telnet yeah. versus... Yeah. Oh, no problem. Radio. So that's what we're trying to accomplish today. All right. Well, good deal. And there's lots of people here to help you with that. And uh, I, I'll mention there are some good videos on that on, uh, uh, on my... Uh, YouTube site, if you want to try AG6AG in the search for YouTube, my God, we got 100 videos. I think 15 of them are on WinLink setup. So, very confusing. Okay, I'll check them out too. Thank you. All right. And uh, tell me a little bit about your setup. So, you've got, looks like you got a mag mount here and a cookie sheet. Yeah, I've got a mag mount with a cookie sheet. It's not magnetic though, but it still works. So. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and you're using that as your uh, as your ground plan, right? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Oh, look at that radio. cute little radio. Got a radio. All right. A power supply. Oh, very good. Signal. And then, of course, your signal link. Signal link box. And right on. Uh, and he's made his battery. battery. Box. Oh. His box. One. Check oh. out his box. Very nice. Yeah. So. This is actually a Milwaukee um, product? 
Yeah, or did you build it? No, I, I, it's, a, it's a Milwaukee pack-out box that I've significantly modified it to turn into a battery box. Right on, right on. That's nice. So, yeah, That's you. nice. Uh, what kind of uh, amper do you have on that? Uh, that one's got a 20 amp hour battery built into it. I was trying to get two in parallel, but uh, didn't quite fit, so I got I got 120. But uh, I've got a switch. Actually, I built it so that I can switch between the internal power supply and then I can plug in an external battery. Oh, pack there you and, go. Uh, it gives me more capacity if I need it. Very nice. And uh, as far as uh, being able to charge while you're operating. Um, I know you do have a DC power or an AC power supply. Can you direct that in and use this as a backup as against it? Yeah, I've got on the back. I've got charging inputs. Okay. And that's where I plug in the external battery pack, which is not yet built. But, okay. Uh, I've, I've got a, a, another box based on a pack out box as well that I'm putting a, an AC battery charger in, it, and I've got a solar charge controller with some solar panels so I can charge this. Very cool. Very it. cool. That's really nice and handy. What do you think it weighs about? You know, it's not that bad. I mean, it's probably, I don't know, 10, 10 15 pounds. It's not that heavy. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's not. Believe me. That way I can uh, carry it. Yeah, too. well, you know, it's funny because I uh, tend to have uh, bigger batteries, right? So I've got uh, like 105 amp hour, 120 amp hour um, oh, uh, liquid acid batteries mm. that weigh in at about 90 to 100 pounds each. So, uh, yeah, that's... Wonderful! Yes. That is absolutely a nice setup. You should see the inside of it. Oh, well, pop it open. Is it easy to get open? On the table. Yeah, bring it up. Well, you can do it down there, however you want to do it. Whatever's easier. Just, oh my goodness gracious, will so you look at that? that nice? Oh man, all right. Everything's labeled. Yeah. Fuses, room for uh, your extension cables out there. Very nice. This is actually well put together. And you modified this yourself, right? Yeah, I bought an empty box and I put all the components on it. I mean, it, it, it was very time consuming. Oh, I bet. But, uh, I bet. I'm happy with the way it turned out. But I mean, that's a great payoff at the end of the day. That's a, And very, very well assembled. Nice work. Excellent work. I would be proud to own that. He did it all. Well, well, there you go. All right. Any last things you'd like to add? Happy holidays. All right. Well, happy holidays <laughs> to you guys. And thank you so much for sharing uh, sharing this because that's uh, why we all get out here is to have a good time and to learn. Yes. And I'm sure some folks will learn from your setup as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I'm also going to try doing someone's high, high frequency radio. Oh, well, there you go. That's what you need to do. You got the license now, right? Yes, I do. All right. Well, I bet you Zach would help you out. Perfect. All right. Or anybody probably could. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, I enjoyed doing this video. It was a lot of fun. And I have to tell you, uh, I'm just constantly amazed that Keith is able to pull this off 11 months out of the year. Uh, of course, the 12th month being in June, which is the actual field day. Uh, he's also very involved in that as well. So uh, hats off to you, Keith. If you want to learn how to put something together like this for your area, send Keith an email. I'm sure he'd be happy to share all the information that he has with you because, you know, that's what amateur radio is all about. Again, his email is keith at w6kme.org. Anyway, with that, hey, thanks for joining me. I really enjoy doing these videos. Uh, and you know what? If you like the video, give me a like, will you? A thumbs up. Uh, also, uh, gee, don't forget to subscribe and uh, come back for more. Anyway, with that, this is Stu, AG6AG, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air.